your first yoga workshop. Imagine all the feelings around it, the excitement, the energy, and the nervousness. Every yoga teacher is pretty nervous about offering their first yoga workshop. And today's consultation call with Sharon O'Neill is chatting all about her yoga workshop. I, I did turn the video off to protect Sharon's privacy during this consultation call. But if you're interested in setting up a consultation call in the future, please make sure you visit my website and click on the work with me tab. Thanks y'all. Enjoy. Hey Sharon, how are you today? I'm good. How are you, Allison? I'm doing great. So thanks for setting up this consultation call. Um, so I know that you, based on kind of the intake that you filled out for me, I know that you kind of want to work on some workshop things and some marketing things and lots of things. So you want to give me a little bit of a background on exactly what we want to focus on today? Yes, all of the things. So um, I've done the 200 hour training through Camp Utopia, right? So you know that. Um, and I want to kind of take some of that material and apply it towards longer immersions with students at my studio. So instead of diving into a 500 hour training, you know, I know there's kind of a lot that goes behind that. I'd like to keep it um, smaller, less intense, and more kind of material focused. So what can I, I guess let's start with that. <laughs> um, and like how long should my immersions be? How many in the series? Like, oh my gosh, I don't know, oh, there's so many questions. Okay, yeah, so many questions. Um, so, okay, so let's start. You've done the 200, you've completed and you've trained some 200 hour teachers and now you're kind of wanting to break that material down. Um, so I think there's a, there's a lot of ways that you can do this. And I think that the way you're going to want to break your material down is going to be based on what material you want to teach. So let's just look at the parts of your yoga teacher training and how we could break those down into workshops. So give me an idea, like what are some of the parts of the program, like big chunks Okay, so, well, a huge part of the program was chakra-based, so I'd really like to take that into a workshop. Um, my own personal obsessions, right, is uh, breathing, so I'd really like to do a lot with breath work um, and anatomy and posture and yoga and breathing with posture. <laughs> I could go on for a really long time. I'm not um, really well versed in like the sutras and stuff like that, but I think for the materials that we had um, for our training, I think that could kind of help me get into it a little bit more. But I'm also wondering how much of those materials I can use from Camp Utopia and from my training, or do I have to come up with all of my own? So, gotcha. Okay. So I'm kind of hearing like you really want to work on it, teach chakras, which could be a whole workshop in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, definitely kind of a pranayama workshop. And I know your background with the physical therapy and stuff. I think the anatomy and the breathing, all of that together. Now you could do just a breath class or a breath workshop. You could do um, you could do an anatomy and physiology workshop, but that's going to be primarily for other, for teachers. Mm. You know, like, like I find my students, they really don't care about anatomy. <laughs> they're like, okay, this is, this is kind of boring to me now. Probably what way they, too much information. <laughs> exactly. It's too much information for them. Now, what they do really like to know is if they're doing their postures correctly. Okay. So I, unless you really want to focus on just working with teachers, I would somehow find a blend between doing anatomy with adding in how to do your postures correctly. That's a little bit more, um, that's just more appealing. People are always, I'm always like, am I doing this right? I don't, I don't know. So people are always looking, I think for that kind of stuff. So that would be my suggestion. You could, 
in the future make just an anatomy workshop, but it would be probably more focused on yoga teachers. Okay. That makes sense. So let's kind of run with that for a minute if we can. If we were to talk about, um, like we'll just kind of side table the chakra workshops. Let's talk more specifically about posture and breathing and, you know, in conjunction with yoga. Um, and let's just, if we can, if that's okay, build like a little mini plan. Yeah. Talk about it. Okay. Um, so I can talk about posture and anatomy and breathing and lung capacities and intercostals and diaphragmatic breath. I can talk about that until I lose my voice. <laughs> um, so what I have a really hard time with is how much time should I dedicate to lecture in, um, in like one class, like say we're doing like three hours, how much time should I be talking and how much time should we be practicing um so they don't get bored and sick of listening to me talk <laughs> dude that's that is such a good question such a good question and so it's hard for me to give you like a steadfast rule sure first a lot of it's going to depend on your time now i think i remember I remember learning whenever I was teaching um, at the university, I remember they said, like, our attention span is really no more, like sitting in a lecture is no more than like 30 minutes. Mm. 50 minutes if it's like a lecture class and something you're really into. But like after like 20 or 30 minutes, your mind kind of starts to wander, you know? Um, now that doesn't mean that you can't lecture for longer than that, but you wouldn't want to just sit there talking about anatomy. You'd want to maybe get up and have people do some demonstrations or walk around the room and do demonstrations on someone else to okay. shift the energy of the room. Does that make sense? Yeah. So not like a full blown, you know, 20 minute practice, just kind of more interactive. Yeah, more interactive. I mean, okay. it's yoga. It's not like you're going to be up there with PowerPoint like, hey, these are your lungs. This is your diaphragm. You never know. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I would advise against that. A nerd moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's then fair. people will zone out after 20 minutes. But if you are doing a lecture and you say, okay, so here's your diaphragm and you talk about the diaphragm and then you tell everyone, all right, so let's feel your diaphragm. It connects here on T12. Here's how we can find T12 and then under the ribs. Oh, feel your diaphragm there. And then maybe bring hands to your ribs and feel your diaphragm expand. That is shifting the energy and the attention of the room. So you could do, you could involve some of those movements and activities in for an hour, you know, okay. It doesn't always have to be a practice. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay. So it's Sorry. kind of about finding ways to engage your audience, I think. Okay. Um, so then I know some of the information, like the posture labs, for example, in, um, in my training, I still have all of that information and I don't necessarily want to just copy paste and hand out Campytopia's information. Um, so maybe we could talk a little bit about the legalities of that. Hey, yeah. yoga teachers. I'm just popping in here because I think Sharon brings up a great question. And this is one that's been really rolling around the yoga industry. And it's about what can I use? from previous trainings, what belongs to me? And there's a lot of stealing that's going on in the yoga world. A lot of breaking of that value of asteya, non-stealing. And it's important that we have this conversation because you can't take old teacher training material and use it. It doesn't belong to you. It is not your property. And it's a break in ethics. But whenever you do take that information, embody it, and then create new information based on your own experience, then you can use that. 
for your workshops and your teacher training. But you cannot take old workshops and just put a different logo on them and call them yours. At Camp Utopia Yoga School, we do have material that's available for you. We offer yoga teacher trainings and we will actually train you on how to train yoga teachers. Same with workshops. We offer the content for you and we train you on how to actually present it so you can offer value-packed workshops and be seen as a leader in your community. If you're interested in this, please visit my website and click on the contact button. Shoot me a message and I will get back to you with information as soon as I can. That's alisonrissell.com. Now, back to Sharon. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk about um, the paperwork and, well, not paperwork, handouts for students. Um, if I'm trying to organize a, like a three-part workshop over you know, three different days and say we're doing, you know, breathing the first day, um, you know, the next workshop we're doing, you know, uh, neutral spine, we're talking about that, the next day we're doing whatever. So should I give them all of this information at workshop one or do I need to split up those pamphlets, those handouts, so they don't get too far ahead? Um, I don't want to overload them with information, but I also feel like sometimes it kind of meshes together and it could be a distraction, I guess. I don't know. Okay. I'm going to tell you my opinion. I've seen it done multiple ways. Here's okay. how I like to do it. Especially the first time I run a workshop, I create the content week by week simply because I honestly, it's really hard for me to know exactly. It's really hard for me to know exactly my time management that first time I run a program. You know, yeah. I have in whenever I come into the first week, I typically over plan my content because I'm nervous. I want to make sure it's all going well. And so I have all of this content. And often what happens is we only make it through a like, maybe let's say 75% of it. Well, now I'll just do that other 25% week too. And then no one knows that we ran over or anything, but for my time management skills, I know, okay, this is where we got first week. So whenever I rerun this, this is how I'm gonna structure it. Um, I always start with the end in mind, knowing where I want to go and I break it all up but I still like to just give things week by week. It also makes it easier for me because the weeks that I'm running the, the workshop, I can create that content. It's not quite as overwhelming for me. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? To try to do it all at once. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd rather time block on like a Tuesday, my workshops on Wednesday. Every Tuesday I have six hours that I'm going to create this content rather than, okay, I have to create 24 hours of content in like a week or something like that. Does that make sense? It does. Um, so then I guess kind of to tag on to that, um, what, what's the longest running workshop you've taught and what seems to be kind of the good timeline. So I just said a 24 hour workshop. That is not correct. I've never taught a 24 hour. Workshop. <laughs> I said that and I was like, I don't know where that number came from exactly, but <laughs> I just made it up. It depends. The typical yoga answer, of course. It depends. Mm -hmm. um, whenever I teach a series, I typically only have about an hour and a half to two hours per week or per series, I guess. Does that make sense? And then I so made each class will be an hour and a half to two hours. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. And a lot of that exactly. is just because of the time of the studio or, you yeah. know, it's hard for people to give up four hours on a Wednesday night. It's a lot. Yeah. But an hour and a half, maybe two hours doable. Um, then for, if you want to do a weekend or you could do a one day, which is about two to three hours mm. you could do, um, you know, you could do a six or an eight hour workshop, but you want to make sure that you bring in lunch. So that's going to take up a pretty big chunk of time there. You know, you want at least an hour and a half of lunch. 
So if you have an eight hour workshop, that's like a 10 hour time commitment. Um, you could do a weekend workshop. For your first one, I would not suggest a weekend workshop. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a yeah, lot. Yeah, I just did like a Baptiste immersion over a weekend and it was, it was too much. It was just, yeah, it was a full-time job. <laughs> it was way too exactly. Much. By Sunday, your brain is fried. You still have laundry yeah. you have to do. You're a little behind on things. It's, it's a yeah. lot. And imagine planning all that content. It's, it's a lot for the first one. Um, so, so yeah, does that help? It does. No, that helps a lot. And, um, I guess you're right. Depending on what the content is, it depends on how many in the series you're going to do. Um, do you usually start class with like an introduction or a meditation or how do you start to break the ice? Cause that's when I feel like I'm really nervous. <laughs> All right. And this is a really great question. And I think it's going to really depend on your personality and how, um, how you feel most comfortable. I think for most yoga teachers, they feel most comfortable starting with a class. The whole goal of the beginning is to ground everyone, including yourself. So keep that in mind. What are techniques that you prefer to ground yourself? Would starting with the class, you may feel nervous, but then you'll, you'll get into your normal flow and then you'll probably feel more confident afterwards. So I think that's a great technique okay. for myself. You know me, I'm like so excited. I'm like meeting everyone and shaking hands and just really pumped. So I prefer to start with a lecture and for everyone to go through and introduce themselves and, and, to, and to start with more of a lecture format. Uh, okay. And then I end with a practice, so they're in a Shavasana and then they leave. But it just depends on what's gonna feel most comfortable for you. How are you gonna feel most grounded and be able to set that scene for the class? Okay. Um, that's really helpful. I, Feel like sometimes I start workshops and everyone's in a circle staring at you and you're like hmm. and then you just babble <laughs> yes yes it can be very intimidating you have to be you have to really be okay with people looking at you for that guidance and I and I don't I mean it's something that I love but um, yeah. yeah I have a lot of experience with like lecture teaching too so that I think has really helped with that. So, yeah. Um, can we talk about price? Yes. Mm. Uh, just from what I've noticed around in my area, um, a workshop will be like a two hour workshop will be $25. Um, That's so cheap. Is it? I mean, how much is a regular class? That's a good point. I think I dropped in 16. So yeah, yeah, that is a good point. Um, I just don't, I feel like, how do I want to say this? Um, so I listened to your breakdown on, um, pricing and how to basically like break even and meet your bottom line and kind of figure out those formulas, which was really helpful. Um, but it's really hard to put a value on your time if you're going to do like a six series and all of that behind the scenes time it takes to break it down. And then I start thinking about, well, my education is maybe a little bit more than the other yoga teachers around. So maybe I'm putting this at exorbitant value on myself. <laughs> but if I were to turn a posture lab um, workshop series into, say, um, you know, seven weeks, just, that seems like a lot, but let's just say seven weeks and once, um, like a couple hours every weekend, what would be a reasonable price for something like that? Okay. So let's think of that. So let's just say seven weeks, what, maybe hour and a half long. Yeah. Okay. So that's what seven, a not nine and a half hours 
Mm -hmm. So let's just say that's a 10. You're thinking of putting on basically a 10 hour workshop over seven weeks. Okay. So that's a lot of time. And keep in mind, that's only the time you're going to spend teaching. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, each time I run a workshop, the first time I run a workshop, it's like so much time to put together all the material. And then the second time I run it, easier. Third time, piece of cake. Fourth, it just is flowing. So, you know, you don't need to charge for every single hour that you're going to be spending. You just need to know it's, it's going to take some time up front to put this together. Um, okay, so 10 hours over seven weeks. The average price in your area is $16 for a drop in ish. Yes. Okay. So what is a five class or 10 class pass at your studio? Do you know, like an estimate? Um, gosh, I can, I can check. It's like, I want to say, I don't know. I just do what the computer tells me to do. So <laughs> fair enough. That's terrible, right? Um, I want to say that it's probably around a hundred bucks for a five class. No, wait, that's not right. $55, $59 for five class pass. I don't, honestly, I have no idea. Five class for, so five class for 60, that's probably about right. That's $12 a class. Yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. Yeah, so that's about $12 per class. So I would think you definitely would not want to go any lower than $12 an hour. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So you, you would break it down by hard numbers and class rates, basically. I would, I would use that as my starting point. Okay. Now, from here, a lot of it's going to depend on what you think the value is you're going to bring, what other workshops are charging, and your, the other costs that you're going to be incurring. Um, but right now, I'm kind of talking about how much money you want to make. Right. That's so it's a 30%, so it's a 70-30 split with the studio. Um, so then that has to kind of get factored into, I guess, how many heads you need to. Did you look at that pricing worksheet that I put up? Oh, a long time ago. Okay. That's honestly what I use to figure this stuff out because then I play around with the numbers. Okay. <laughs> Hey, yoga teachers, just popping in once more to say that you can grab this pricing worksheet from alisonrissell.com. It's a great guide that will really help you set your workshop price. It's a free gift that I have for you, and you're going to watch me walk Sharon through this free guide. So make sure you go to alisonrissell.com and on the homepage, add your name and email address, and I'll shoot you over this awesome, awesome pricing guide. This is really what I use to set all my workshops, all my teacher trainings. I mean, this is it. This is it. So you use the same idea if you're just doing a one day, two hours, like what do I want to make per hour, basically? So you can charge more if it's just a one day. Sometimes. I, I think about, I use it as a fixed cost and you'll see your pay. I think about, let's just use best case scenario let's say that you want to make five hundred dollars on this okay. one. all right so your pay is 500 bucks and that's not best case that's actually really doable probably so your pay is 500 um your marketing costs are you gonna do any kind of facebook ads or anything um well the studio would advertise for you do you feel but you're I, not paying I, for it, right? Correct. Okay. Um, that's just part of your 30% cost. Right. And I don't. So then, so then you probably won't have any marketing costs. Maybe you'll pay for some paper. Um, so then you don't have a fixed studio rate. You're doing a 70, 30 with the, with the studio. So we'll come back to that. 
you won't have any travel, right? Right. Um, you're not paying other teachers. So your fixed costs are just that $500. Now your variable costs, these are your materials. You're gonna be printing handouts and stuff for them. Maybe you wanna put down per person, you're gonna spend 10 bucks on printing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Do okay. you usually put your printed information in a, like a folder? No, it depends on how much I'm going to give them. You know, in my teacher yeah. training, you get that huge binder because there's a lot of info, but yeah. often I just hand them sheets of paper and staple. Your studio percentage is set at 30%. We're going to come back to that right now. And that's actually correct. Credit card processing fees. You won't have to worry about that because the studio is going to handle that. Make sense? Yep. Okay. Let's say that you want to charge $12 an hour. So your actual selling price is 120 bucks. Now you should have seen that studio percentage changed, right? Um, yes. Good. Okay. What look down, what is the minimum number of students needed to break even? All right. So your pay is 500. You don't have any of these other costs. You're going to spend 10 bucks per person. Your selling price is 120, so the studio is gonna get $36 per person, okay? So in order for you to make that $500, you would need seven students to enroll. At $120 per student? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now let's say that you wanna make $1,000. You need 13 and a half students, so 14 students. Or let's say that you wanna make um, $500, but you want the price to be $200. Well, now you only need four students. So, so this is how I determine pricing. Do you think it's realistic to get seven students in the class? I do. I just. That price, it just makes me nervous. I don't know why. Um, well, no, I know why. <laughs> uh, $120, like if I were to go and pay $120 for a two hour workshop, I, um, I guess I would be expecting quite a bit. And just this area, um, like there are five hour, six hour immersions with um, acupuncture, Reiki and yoga for about that price. And that's a lot to offer. And how um, many hours are they? Like five or six hours. So you're going to be offering 10 hours. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. For yeah. a series. Yeah. So this is actually a lot cheaper. Okay. That's true. I don't know why I was thinking one day, but you're right. Yeah. Now, if you want to just do a one day workshop, then I mean, again, it depends. This is set at $12, like an estimate of 12 bucks an hour, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I want you to realize that sometimes the pricing is a mindset issue. And if that person is offering Reiki yoga, and let's just say nutrition, is she teaching all three or are there three different people? Because if there's three different people, they're probably not each making 500 bucks. They may yeah. only be making $200. Yeah. So you have to think about all those things, but also think about whenever you signed up for yoga teacher training, the average 200 hour yoga teacher training is what? $2,000, $2,500. $2, That's about $10 an hour. We're willing to pay minimum of $10 an hour. And if it's really good, we'll pay 12 to $20 an hour, especially for a shorter workshop. If this was only a five hour workshop, you may still wanna keep it at 120. And just, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Actually, it helps a lot just to see it um, in writing. <laughs> and and be able to mess with the numbers and and you're right i think there's definitely a mental like what am i worth it's hard to put a value on yourself and your time and your education and experience etc so it is it's it's super hard and i mean i think every yoga teacher goes through these mental things of like well i don't know if i'm worth 500 dollars 
I mean, think about how much money you invested in your education, in your training, mm. you know, and you're continuing to improve and you know that you're going to be offering a valuable service. So it is worth that. Um, you'll, you'll have to market it obviously, but people are willing to pay if it's something that they're really interested in. You were really willing to pay for yoga teacher training because it was something that you found really valuable and others will be willing to pay if it's something they feel valuable, they feel is valuable and you've invested a lot. And so you're worth that. You are definitely worth that money. You definitely are. I'll also tell you, I think I've talked about this before, that if you're too cheap, people will expect less and they will think that you're cheap. You know, like I, I never go and get a $30 massage because it's probably going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> you know, I'm just being real. It's probably going to be really bad. So yeah. I would be willing to pay $60 to go and get this massage because I know that it's going to be worth my money. Now I'm not willing to pay $200 for a massage. So you don't want to be too expensive. I mean, that's really extreme. I'm not willing to pay that, but I definitely don't want to pay 30 bucks. So yeah, you want to be somewhere in the middle, you know? Okay. And, you know, look around your market. I know that you're in you're in a smaller town, but you have a lot of yoga still around you. So look at what other people are offering and maybe price, especially since you want to do yoga teacher trainings and stuff, you may want to price yourself just a little bit higher to offer that extra value and to show that you know what you're doing and you know that you're worth that little extra money. Preach it, girl. Perceived value, <laughs> man. Perceived value. <laughs> no, I... I I completely agree. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I do that regularly when I buy stuff, like where's the, the mid level, you know, you don't want the cheap thing. You don't want the most expensive thing, but you definitely want to be in that middle class. Right. Okay. Exactly. So, so yeah, be in that middle class, look at how many hours, you know, if you're just teaching a two hour workshop, I obviously probably would not charge $120. Yeah. You know, so it depends on how much time it depends on your space. If your space only allows four students, you're going to have to charge more because right now your minimum number is seven. So, you know, all those factors come into play. Do you have, um, what is the largest workshop headcount wise that you've taught? I think I had like 19 or 20. Do you feel like that's too much to manage and it kind of loses that individual attention? I do. I really yeah. do. It was, it was a lot for me to manage, especially because we had, I did it as a class series and we had, um, you know, an hour and a half each time. And so I don't feel like I got enough personal attention with each person. I think if you had like a full weekend workshop, managing 19 or 20 and bringing on a guest teacher with you, someone else to help manage and give hands-on adjustments and personal attention would be better and more doable. Um, but yeah, I, I like to keep my teacher trainings and even my workshops a little bit smaller in that eight to 12 range, just for more of the one-on-one -on -one attention. That's my personal opinion. I mean, there's a lot of big yoga celebrities out there who have teacher trains with 50 to 100 people and do big workshops like that, but they also have other teachers helping them. Yeah. So. Um, okay, so one more question. Yes. To kind of wrap it up, I guess. Um, do you always have feedback sheets at the end of your workshops? Yes. Always. All, yes, always. Okay. I always ask for, I always have feedback sheets or I do a survey monkey and I email them. I will tell you feedback sheets, whenever you give it to them, you're more likely to get it back. Yeah. Doing a survey monkey, not everyone responds, um, an email, but I always try and do feedback sheets. I always try and talk to them um, to find out what I could do better. Cause I always believe that we can do, there's always something we can improve upon. 
um, and I'm really interested in what they are interested in. So I always do feedback sheets and I always leave, I always have a few questions that are yes, no, or rating scale, something really quick for them to fill out. But then I also try and ask for one testimonial. Some of them fill out the testimonial, some of them don't. Um, but I like that open-ended feedback because you can use those testimonials for your next marketing campaign. I like it. Awesome. Cool. Should we talk about CEUs or does that not matter at this point? No, it does matter. It definitely matters. I mean, um, what is your intent? Who is this training for? So, well, I guess, first of all, as a 200 hour teacher, can I even give CEUs? You have to be an ERYT 200 which is what a thousand hours i believe so yeah okay. and you'd have to you have to be an eryt 200 and then you need to go on to yoga alliance and register as a yacep it's like 20 dollars a year okay i have one more question about workshops so this is about advertising and marketing um the studio We'll do, you know, some social media stuff, put up a flyer in the studio, put it on the whiteboard, whatever. Um, but if I want to get on social media and be posting stuff, what, how much is too much? Um, like, I feel like once a day is sufficient, but then I see people posting like on all their social media accounts, like five or six times a day. And it's like, eh. So There's your answer. Not that much, much because it's yeah. <laughs> I'm not the only one that feels that way then. <laughs> no. No. Okay. And and here's the thing about posting to social media is it depends on what you're posting. Are you posting an image with words on it that says register for my workshop? Or are you posting a picture of you and a triangle and you're talking about really good form and alignment and then maybe at the very bottom you have hey join me for my workshop on this day that is valuable content and people want to see that that's i would do no more than really once a day um mm -hmm. i just don't think it's necessary you could do even three times a week, you know, two to three times a week. But that kind of valuable content people are looking at and they're basically saying, oh wow, this Sharon girl, she knows her, she knows her stuff. And maybe they don't register that first time, but maybe the fifth time they see that, they're like, man, she really knows her stuff. Like, this is really useful information. Her workshop is gonna be really good. I should maybe click on this and maybe I should attend. Does that so make sense? more about, yeah, absolutely. M more about um, kind of sneaking in the content of the workshop versus just saying, I have a posture workshop and, you know, learn how to sit up straight, but more about the content. Yes. You want to provide valuable content. Um, now, maybe every two weeks you do make a post and I'm not a big fan of like the images with text on them. We're just really not stopping on those, but maybe it's just a really nice picture of you, but all the, all the captions are about, um, are about your upcoming workshop. So that's more of like a marketing or sales post. Okay. One of those every two, two to three weeks is great. As you get closer to your workshop, maybe you do that, do those a little bit more. So how far in advance are you starting to advertise these workshops? It depends. Um, so I once heard something, a rule that was like, for every $500, you want to promote maybe two months in advance. I would say for your workshop the first time, I would say one to two months. Okay. In advance because people don't have to save as much money, you know, it's, it's okay for like a teacher training. You probably want to be promoting six months in advance, you know? 
I'm trying to think. I think I've only ever marketed for a workshop like two or three weeks in advance, but it was always just like a one day um, or maybe two short days or something like that. And and I don't think that's enough time because most yeah. people already have things booked that far out. You know, like my next two weeks, I know exactly where what I'm doing. So, but if you can catch me two months before, I'm like, oh, oh, I don't have anything on my schedule. Let me add that in, you know? Um, yeah, okay. And, and whenever you're providing that valuable content, you can start promoting earlier because people aren't annoyed by your posts. <laughs> and you post these to your personal page? I post them on my business page, um, but your personal page will get a lot more traction. And your Instagram will get a little bit more traction. Pages like, um, yeah, business pages don't get a lot of traction. Now, what you'll want to do is really post in groups. The algorithms are changing for, uh, for groups now? Yes. So like the yoga teachers of the Flathead Valley group or, you know, yoga teachers of Colorado group, that's where you're kind of putting a lot of your marketing content. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I don't post in those every day because they can get yeah. boring. Um, but even like, a, I'm sure y'all have like a, a white fish buy and sell group. Oh Yeah. Now in that kind of group, I would post like a picture. I wouldn't post valuable content in that kind of group. I would post a sales because those groups are about sales. <laughs> yeah. Does that make okay. sense? Absolutely. Sales. All right. Cool. Helpful. Thank you. Well, I really appreciate you taking time to go through all of this with me. You're welcome. There you go, yoga teachers. That's how I helped Sharon design her first set of workshops for Whitefish Montana. I'm happy to say that Sharon is launching all of her workshops this upcoming fall. So we'll have to keep up with her on the Yoga Teacher Talk Facebook group to see how they're going. If you're interested in a consultation call to start your first workshop or maybe improve upon your current workshops, then visit my website, alisonrissell.com and click on the work with me tab. I have work. I have a really great holiday special going on for the month of December. You can get three one-on-one -on -one sessions with me for $1.99. Normally my sessions are $1.25 a piece. So this is a really great deal. You're committing to three different meeting times for $1.99. You're basically saving $100. I encourage you to go to alisonrissell.com, click on the work with me tab and get signed up for that holiday deal. I hope you found a lot of value from this. And if you have questions, visit us in the Yoga Teacher Talk Facebook group or shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day.